Hello and welcome to the second part in this series of videos on how to draw meerkat. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to work on the eye and the surrounding skin area and also as well we'll put a little bit of the the underdrawing sort of shading into the picture as well. So let's run the intro and get into it. So to start with, I'm going to take a 2B pencil. Uh, the 2B is not sharp, it's blunt, because again, I don't want it to scratch the paper. And I'm basically going to just draw around the eye itself. I'm now going to use a blender to basically build up some of the tone in the eyeball. Now, blenders are basically, it's uh, rolled up paper. And what I'm gonna do with it is it's just used just to build up some tone lightly. This blender's very old, it's about 17 years old. And you can see it's been repaired with tape to hold it together. But over those years, it's become very ingrained with graphite, which uh, makes it ideal for this. Uh, one thing you never want to do with a blender is to put it in a pencil sharpener and sharpen it as it will just wreck it. The big advantage with the, with the blender is that um, basically it's non-invasive into the paper. So it means you can, if you make a mistake, you can easily erase it with a putty rubber. To keep a glassy look, I build up the eye in layers. So I'm now using a 2B pencil, which I'm going to apply a bit more tone. And then I use the blender just to, to, to spread that around. Uh, generally speaking, what I'll do is I'll work from the top of the eyeball because the top of the eye is generally more likely to be in shadow. And then I'll basically pull the tone down and then that'll give a nice graduation of the tone. Now, as you can see, I'm just using the blender just to, to pull the 2B down that I've applied to the, the paper. And what the blender will do will just basically build up that depth of tone by spreading that 2B around. And it will work it into the grain of the paper. And this uh, uh, is what will give us our, our nice glassy look to the eye. So again, I repeat the process using the 2B and then the blender until I build the depth of tone that I, I'm happy with. This can take a bit of time to build up the depth of tone that I want, but it's worth doing. If you just go in too heavy with the 2B to start with, and work it into the paper too hard, you indent it and basically you end up with a, a swirl pattern appearing. This way you get a nice smooth even tone. Because the blender is made of rolled up paper, it does after a few years have a tendency to come unglued so all I've done with mine is just literally just wrapped it in tape to hold it together.
Okay, so that's a nice depth of tone built up. And as you can see, there's no graining showing through. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is use a sharp 4H pencil. I'm going to engrave a line around the bottom of the eyeball. So the 2B pencil that we put around the eye, I'm basically going to work through that and it will engrave that into the paper. I'm only going to do the lower half of the eye though because I want the top bit that's in shadow so as I can still blend it, which I won't be able to do with the bottom part now. Now, still using the blunt 2B pencil, I can now start to build the picture up around the eye. So I, I'm working on the skin around the eye and there's a nice highlighted area underneath it and I can leave that. And I'm using the 2B just quite erratically, just little tiny circles and squiggles just to build up a, an undersurface for the skin texture. Also as well, when working on this area, I can use effectively the grain in the paper to give that a little subtle texture to the surface as well. Also, I'm not pressing too hard with the pencil, just enough to get a nice tone out of it. And it sometimes is a good idea to just use a piece of scrap paper just to experiment on and to see how hard you need to press. The pencil I'm using is a Caran d'Ache Graphwood. Now, although it's a 2B, if you're using a different maker pencil, you may find you need to, to use a different grade for this, as manufacturers do tend to vary from one to the other in terms of the, the tone the pencil produces. So just bear that in mind. I find it's a good idea to really look at the reference that you're using because sometimes you can find you tend to just glance at it and you miss stuff whereas if you look at it for a bit you can really see all the detail. The closer you can get the reference picture to the drawing the, the better. Um, this is quite simple with this one because obviously the the eye is, is very close to the top but if you need to, just fold the picture in half just to get the bit you want to work on just that bit closer. When I work on larger drawings, I, I tend to find I end up folding the reference photograph up into a, a, a lot of bits because it just makes it easier to work with. Um, and also as well with very large stuff, it just ends up getting in the way otherwise. So I continue to work around the outside of the eye, the, the skin area, um, again still just using those squiggles or figure of eights or, or just little patterns just to, to create that effect of the, the skin texture. Uh, just working in the darker areas and, and leaving the more highlighted areas alone for the time being. So I've just rolled a point on the end of the putty rubber just so as I can just pick out some of the highlights and just bring them back out again. The one I am using is a Caran d'Ache and it did start its life grey. Now I've also used the Factis and the Maphead grey erasers and I find they work just as well.
Still using the 2B just to build up just a little bit more tone around the eye. And now just a bit of putty rubber again, just to bring out some of the highlights. So now I can start to apply some 9B to the picture. Now, normally when I work on pictures, I would only use the 9B at the end, but because on this one to, to show what's going on, I'm, I'm going to apply it now. So as you can see what it, it looks like. Now, we've done a lot of work with the 2B. So literally all I have to do is just literally brush the 9 over the top and that will just literally just give it that last little bit of punch. There's not a massive amount of difference between the two tones, but I find it does just give it that last strong bit of uh, contrast to the pitch. I find the Caran Dash 9B adheres to the paper very well, but when this comes to blending it, smudging it, or whatever you want to call it, it uh, doesn't seem to move very much by using the blender over the top of it. But what I have found is the best way to do this is to use the 2B pencil, as by working it over the top of it, it will pick the tone up and spread it and blend it quite nicely. So basically, if, uh, if I want to blend the 2B pencil, I can just use the blender. But if I want to blend the 9B pencil, I just use the 2B pencil over the top. And then to, to really finish it, if I want a, a real smooth finish to the edge of that, I can then obviously use the, the blender again just to finish the edge of the 2B. So again, just using the putty rubber with a point rolled on the end of it, just to pull out some more highlights. And now just a, a bit of 2B, just, uh, just going around the highlight in the eye, just, uh, just to reshape it just a little bit. The eye will need a little bit more work, uh, but that'll be done at the end of the picture. Just those last few little bits of detail and texture and so on, just to, to finish it. So I'm quite happy with the eye now. So what I'm going to do is now move on to building up the rest of the picture. And to do this, I'm going to use the blender. Uh, and this is really good for actually sort of getting some subtle shading in. And it will start to give the picture some shape. Now, I don't just want to shade with the blender. I want to actually look at the reference picture, look for the direction that the fur goes, and then try and replicate that with the blender. Now you can work quite loosely with these and quite free. And the real nice thing is that you're again, not doing anything uh, overly aggressive into the paper. So it can be very simply erased with the uh, putty eraser. As I said earlier, the blender that I am using is very old. 
and as such is very ingrained with graphite from years of use. Now, if you're starting a new blender, the thing to do to get some graphite worked into it is to basically get a piece of scrap paper and then with a 2B pencil, just lightly brush it over the surface and then gently work it into the end of the blender. And this will then start to build a degree of graphite within the blender itself. Now this may take some time, uh, a bit of use, but uh, eventually you'll end up with a blender which just works all the time without needing to be loaded with graphite. The other thing to remember as well, when you're, you're using a new blender for the first time and you're trying to load it with graphite is uh, when you're working it into the end, do not press too hard as you can then bend the end of the blender over. Just do it gently and the, the blender will then keep its shape and will then slowly wear over time. I found the way to choose a good blender is to just uh, run your finger over the end of it and feel if it's velvety. If it's velvety, then it tends to hold the graphite nicely and it's smooth to use. Some blenders can be very hard and very scratchy, but if it's velvety, generally speaking, it's going to be good. In the description below, I've listed all the materials that, uh, that I'm using for, for this picture, uh, plus also as well this week, I'll do another video which will basically be uh, about the materials and how they work and how they can be used. Now, I really like using the blender to build the picture up this way. Um, it's very quick, it's very effective, and it really starts to, to sort of turn that outline of the picture into something that's really got real nice shape and form to it. So that's it. Uh, this stage of the picture is now complete. And next week, what I'll be doing is showing you how you can use a dart to basically create the effect of fur. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and want to see more, then uh, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to be informed of when I upload another video, then just click the bell icon as well. So hopefully see you the same time next week for the next part in this series of videos.